All righty. We are going to talk a little bit about uh, SQL alchemy uh, and Alembic. Uh, definitions. Uh, SQL alchemy is a library for Python to interact with your databases in a little bit more object-oriented way. <clears throat> um, you can, of course, just use the SQLite library and send it, uh, send your database uh, straight SQL, which if that's what you're into, great. Uh, that is really good sometimes. But <clears throat> for, uh, for the kinds of apps we're gonna be developing, especially, uh, it helps to kind of abstract that away. So kind of the way we've been building uh, our Python models for uh, code challenge prep with the relationships and everything, uh, we are going to build some models that rely on this library to do the same thing, only storing it in a database instead of in memory. Um, the second part, Alembic, is a... Um, handles uh, migrations and seeds and stuff. And basically that means uh, it's an automated way, <clears throat> kind of automated way to uh, set up your database tables, alter stuff. Uh, so, so basically you check in these files with your project and then someone else who wants to work on your project checks them out, runs them and they get the same database set up as you theoretically, uh, usually, usually good. So um, I think I've got some, I've got some stuff here uh, to just kind of roll through. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, I am not a full-time Python developer and I only use this in the context of teaching you all how to do it. So uh, I'm not as fluent in it as I am with uh, JavaScript and React, so, uh, or general Python, I guess. So uh, we'll just go through this and see how it goes. Uh, so let me see, I'm gonna share my code window. Here we are. Great, great, great. Get one in the right place. And here we go. So <clears throat> I'm just going to kind of roll through some of the stuff and talk about it um, to uh, kind of understand what it all means and everything. So uh, first off, SQL Alchemy is uh, this library. So what we're going to do is we're going to import a bunch of stuff from that library and uh, use it. We'll talk about what all the different pieces are. Um, SQL Alchemy is an ORM uh, object uh, relation models or manager, depends on who's, who you're talking to. Uh, basically, this is the library to hook up stuff. And every ORM does it slightly differently. Uh, there's a bunch of ORMs for Python. Um, Ruby's got Rails and some other stuff. Uh, JavaScript has dozens of them. Um, you know, some some uh, popular ones, uh, SQLize or uh, do people still use Bookshelf? I don't know. Um, yeah, in every language, there's going to be something that does this. Almost every language that you're going to use in modern times. So. Um, the way that this does it is it uses something called a declarative base, which um, I don't know why it's named that. <laughs> um, it is uh, not an incredibly uh, meaningful name, but uh, it's there for historical reasons. And that's why we use it. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, build out some stuff here. So <clears throat> We're going to need to import these things here. So uh, from, uh, and so SQL Alchemy is the thing that we have in our uh, pip file. So when I did the pip install, it installed all the SQL Alchemy stuff and all the Alembic stuff uh, from the main uh, repo that they have for all these uh, libraries and whatnot, which is super cool. Uh, so from SQL Alchemy, uh, I'm going to import um, I'm going to import a few things. I'm going to import this. Is it going to? Yeah, it's going to autocomplete for me. Uh, I'm going to get this primary key thing. We're going to make some columns. We're going to make some strings. We're going to make some integers. Cool. Um, and we're going to be using primary keys. Great. Um, so that is a bunch of basically data types and 
uh, objects we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, we also need to import the main main deal here. So we're going to import the uh, SQL SQL alchemy SQL alchemy. Oh, let's do an import. How about that? <clears throat> uh, let's import from. Oh, actually, we need to do what it says here uh, from SQL Alchemy uh, extension um, declarative. This is where we're getting our declarative base. Declare, uh, maybe I need to spell it right. D E C L. There we go. So, declarative base is sort of the um, when we make a Python model that is hooked up to our database. This base class is the base that it's going to be um, built off of. Um, not sure why it's called declarative base, but it is. Um, cool. So once we have this set up, um, so this is just the class definition uh, declarative base. We need to actually um, uh, make a instance of it. So um, I'm just going to call it base because that's what we always call it. Um, and I'm going to call the um, constructor there. So this is making it our, our base, a new instance of the declarative base class. Great, we did that. So now we get to do the fun stuff. Um, so we're going to make a pet class here uh, like we've been doing in a bunch of the other ones. <clears throat> um, and we will it's going to look a little bit different from uh, what we're used to doing because and that's because the declarative base takes care of a lot of that stuff for us in the background. Um, if you went through the ORM in Python labs, uh, there is a lot of typing <laughs> to uh, make the class and wrap it up in uh, useful things to send the SQL and build out templates and whatnot. Um, the declarative base. Uh, does a lot of that work for you, and it's super neat. So we're going to um, just start off our pet class, um, and we're going to make it a subclass of base. It's going to inherit from base. So that means all the cool stuff that declared a base has, or all the cool stuff that base has. Um, and this is a little bit confusing syntax-wise uh, because the instance that we're we're not getting an instance. We're getting that class definition. We're, we're using declarative base to generate a class definition for us. And we're calling that class base. So it's kind of a, it's not a class, I guess, but it's a class factory um, that's generating that. So we're inheriting from that base class. Um, why it doesn't just export a base class, who knows? Uh, but that's what it does. So we're, we're getting our base class. So um, a feature that you will see in a lot of ORMs in a lot of languages um, is uh, uses a language feature called introspection. Uh, and that means that it look it's code that can look at itself and change itself. Um, well, it can look at itself at least. So um, we need a uh, we need it to know what table this class is going to be based, based on because again, the, kind of the uh, parameters, the, uh, what's, what's the word? I'm losing my programming brain. The, uh, the, the things that the, the members of the uh, class are gonna be our columns and then the instances of the class are gonna be our rows. So uh, we need to let it know what the table name is. Um, many ORMs are able to look at um, the class name and say, oh, your class is named pet. I'm gonna make a table called pets. Um, SQL Alchemy doesn't do that, so we need to do that explicitly. Uh, and it uses our uh, special uh, table name that you have to spell correctly. Um, and we're just going to set that to pets. So now, now it knows um, what the table name is going to be. And so when we're, uh, but when we're doing our stuff, it's going to work on that table. Um, and Again, uh, a lot of ORMs do this under the hood for you. Um, you have to do it explicitly in uh, SQL Alchemy. So we are going to uh, tell it that the primary key or the index of our table is going to be called ID, like uh, every thing is in all 
<laughs> tables pretty much. Um, so uh, we just need to set that table args up. Table args. No plus plus in Python. Uh, and so we need to create um, a tuple basically that has our primary key constraint and we're gonna say that's the ID. And it's a tuple has to, it's a tuple with one member. And so it doesn't, uh, it can't tell it's a tuple unless there's a comma in there. So we'll give it a comma. So uh, that is that. So that's the um, kind of like the, the basic um, maintenance, the uh, not maintenance, the um, busy work you have to do for most uh, things there. Um, I, I really would love to uh, fork <laughs> SQL Alchemy and like just have it do that automatically, but there's a lot of people working on it and I'm not, I don't care. So we're going to uh, add our columns now. So in um, in a regular class, we would you know define an init uh, and we would take um, ID name blah 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 blah, and then we'd set it. Uh, in here, we'd say self ID equals ID, uh, et cetera. And we'd have all our uh, properties, def name, blah, blah, blah. Um, we don't have to do any of that here. Uh, this is something SQL Alchemy takes care of us when we create our uh, columns. So instead of defining all that stuff for us, we just kind of tell it what kind of thing we're looking for. It will not only define all those uh, properties in our class, but it will also hook them up to database methods, uh, which is super cool. Um, so we just tell it, uh, instead of you know defining ID, we're just going to uh, create these variables in here. Uh, and so it'll know what they are. So uh, we're gonna make a new column and it's gonna be an integer. And uh, these are all methods. So we have to call them and they will generate a new thing for us there. Um, same with name. N -A -N -E. uh, only this time it's a string and we imported all these up top. So we got them available. Um, and then we just follow through with all the rest of them via species. Species. Uh, we're going to get a uh, breed, which is different than species, I guess. Um, temperament, which is also a string. Um, and owner ID. So this is going to be a little bit different. Um, owner ID is going to be uh, integer. Um, I don't think we need to do it here, but we're going to uh, talk about how it's a foreign key in a little bit. Nope. And Um, cool. And that is that. Um, so this is the, this is the cool part of most RMs, including SQL Alchemy. Um, they, you can write all this stuff yourself, um, with what you know now. Um, you know, if you go back and look through the ORM in Python, uh, stuff in Canvas, um, it's, pretty straightforward if you're if you're comfortable with SQL and Python. Um, it's just a lot of typing. And the more stuff you have to write yourself, uh, the more surface area there is for uh, bugs to um, breed on. So uh, having having this automated in whatever way, even to this extent, is uh, super nice. Um, some ORMs you will find um, you can kind of make a, uh, a migration or a table definition and just call the class the same thing as the table and it will automatically like look at the table and set all this up for you. Um, this is not one of those RMs, so this is what we got. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna copy paste this part because I don't wanna type it all. <laughs> um, this is basically just um, saying that when we, when we print out this class, uh, it's going to do it in a nice way. So instead of just saying object class pet blah, 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 it's gonna actually give us a nice uh, output for that ripper there. 
Um, that's pretty much it for the for the definition. Um, pretty much any any class uh, that you're going to be using with uh, SQL Alchemy is going to look more or less like this. There's not a lot to it once you get the basic kind of uh, template down. Uh, you can clearly add a lot of stuff to it, but it takes care of the basic CRUD stuff there. So um, now we're going to do this. I'm going to talk to this a little bit before we actually go through and edit things. Uh, so this is all that's going to be in this file. Um, actually, before we before we move on, any questions about what we've done here? Awesome. Cool. So let's talk about migrations and stuff next. So um, Alembic is the library that we're going to be using for doing migrations. Um, and we can you know, see imported that in our pip file here. Uh, what is a migration? Um, kind of like we mentioned at the top, migration is a uh, is some sort of system to automate um, creating, changing, uh, rolling back database configurations or setups. Um, we and specifically, they use uh, files generally in the language that you're working in, uh, in this case, Python, um, so that you can check those in alongside the rest of your code. And anyone using your code uh, that works with your current database setup will be able to create that database and uh, work on the same kind of database. You've got it. Uh, there's also seed files. So if you have some, uh, some uh, setup or test or demo data, you want to work with, you can run that. And so they can have the uh, exact same setup as you're developing. Uh, so that's pretty cool. It also has the concept of, um, uh, what do they call it in Olympic? Basically um, updating. So going to the most current version, uh, which is kind of like doing a git pull to get all the re changes and then running your migration to get the database in the right spot from where you are. Uh, and you can also roll it back. So if um, you know, if you need to go back to a previous version of the code that uses a different database structure, uh, when you uh, do that, you can roll back the database and say, roll it back to this version. Uh, so that's really cool. And that's a feature in most ORMs, uh, which, is, which is nice. So um, we need to uh, set up our migrations first. So uh, what we're going to do is we should have Alembic. Uh, Alembic. Oh, are we going to get that? Let's find out. Um, so we're in our app directory. Oh, yeah, we need to be in app. That's what it is. Um, cool. And then, oh, is it going to let me do this? It's going to give me problems, isn't it? I bet it is. Ha <laughs> cool. Um, I did my pip and install, right? Let me do it again just to make sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, yeah, of course. It then run Alembic. Alembic in it. There we go. So now it's going to be looking at all the stuff in here. Uh, so we have to run it in Pippin, or I have to at least, because uh, it's in the virtual environment. Uh, and so instead of going into the Pippin shell, I just we do it with Pippin for an instant and just run. Uh, instead of just running it straight up. Um, cool. So uh, it's going to go ahead and create a little migrations directory for me here. There we go. Um, it has some stuff in it. So we've got our migrations directory, the versions directory, uh, which we have no versions yet. Uh, it's going to create our environment. Uh, there it is. Uh, a little readme for us and a uh, Mako file. Uh, Mako is a Python uh, templating library. And basically, when you create, um, cool, I don't want that. Uh, when you create new uh, migrations, it kind of uses this template that it creates generally uh, to make the new one. And so it's good. It's got a bunch of stuff in there that. Olympic uses, uh, makes it really nice. Um, is there any useful thing? Nope, not, nothing useful in there. Great. So um, 
so it's basically like stubbing out a uh, a uh, skeleton directory for us there, so we can do our um, do our migrations from there. Uh, um, great. So I need to do a couple things first. So we're going to go into our uh, configuration file. Um, we're going to uh, give it a, a database name to work off of, um, and we're going to uh import model from model to import base yeah great we're gonna use base there um because it's not automatically set up to do that and we are going to tell it to use the information from that to set up our stuff so uh that's a quick i'm gonna copy paste that here just so i can oh, great great uh there's a lot of options you can play with uh we're not gonna we're not gonna play with most of them um so uh we need to find our sql alchemy url and set it to this so um this assumes that you have a uh so if we're using like a postgres database uh, we could do that you know major that's where you can give us our you know the, um, so that would be our database for that. In our case, whoops, uh, in our case, we are just going to grab SQLite because it is much simpler than that. So we're just saying in SQLite, um, we're going to use a database called pet app. Great. Um, done and done. Uh, so in environment PUI, I'm just going to get rid of this and do it from <laughs> um, in the environment Python. Uh, we need to look for um, the thing that you took off. Uh, we need to look for the target metadata and add this. Cool. Um, do we need to? Do I need to uncomment that? I don't remember. Um, I think so. Base metadata. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, target metadata equal base metadata. So I'm going to uncomment that. Here's my model. And cool. So now we uh, know that Limbic is going to be using that um, our specific base class um, that had all our stuff set up in it. And um, this is the basic configuration you need to do. Um, once you do it, you never really have to do it again. Uh, and so I pretty much always have to look that up whenever I do it because I, I, I don't do it every day. Uh, well, I've probably done it like a dozen times in my life. So no shame in looking stuff up. Um, great. Now we're going to actually run this migration. So what it's going to do is it's going to uh, look, at our, um, look at our stuff here. Um, and it's going to generate the, um, the, the version file for it. Um, this should be added here. Yep, we should get a data file and uh, we'll walk through it. So we're just gonna run uh, pip run limbic, limbic revision. So in theory, uh, if I've spelled everything right, we should be good to go. Great, cool. Failed. Oh, not cool. Um, does not provide a metadata object or sequence to the uh, and proceed with auto generate. Doesn't provide a metadata object or sequence of objects in the context. Is that true? Because it looks like we have it. Um, what am I missing here? Is it because you set it to none right after? Yep, that is it. Thank you. Awesome. Let's try that one more time. Cool. Did it. So now we have our version in here. Uh, and so these are uh, um, different ORMs. Do it this different way. Um, if you're using something like Rails, um, it will timestamp these. 
so that when they are run, it is easy to see the order they are run in. Um, Alembic does a little bit differently. It gives it a kind of uh, generated uh, UID here. And uh, it will say, it will kind of chain them together through the configuration. So uh, it knows where to start and it knows what the next one or the previous one is. Um, that is less useful to human eyes, but it's how Alembic does it. So that's how we do it. Uh, cool. And so walking through this, um, it's just giving us the revision name, which is going to work here uh, when we did it. Uh, it has all the template stuff that we can see in our uh, Mako. I do not want that. Don't show again for Mako files. Um, gives us our revision and the up and down one. And then here are the commands it's going to run to uh, create and or roll back our database. Uh, we're most concerned with the upgrade one, uh, update one. Upgrade, yeah. Um, and so basically it's going to say, uh, hey, this is our, these are things where uh, <laughs> the uh, clearly named things that we're importing from Olympic itself. And we're going to use them to create our table based on all the stuff that we set up in our models here. Um, so it writes all this stuff for us. Um, and uh, if we want to roll it back, it will get rid of the table. Um, and again, the cool thing about this is if we do, you know, if we change our um, table here, uh, in fact, let's just do it. Let's say, um, uh, yeah, let's, let's, uh, we're going to add a thing here. If we do the same uh, auto generate again, uh, let's grade. Um, this should look at our oh, target database is not up to date. Oh, because I didn't run it. Yeah. Um, but if it were up to date, uh, this would generate a new uh, a new migration with just adding that one column. Uh, so it would alter table uh, with the column that we defined so that when we, if our database is up to date, we can run that migration and just get the new one uh, set up the way we want. And our downgrade would be altering the table to remove that. Um, so we did that, um, and yeah, uh, our database we can look at here, open the database, and it's just the Olympic version. Uh, I need to actually run it, don't I? I bet. Um, let's take a look at, we don't need this anymore. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm missing a step here. Um, do, 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 do. What am I missing? I'm missing. Uh, yep, that's right, that's right. Right. Yeah, that's what I need to do. Um, cool. So uh, we have our migration. Clearly, it has not done anything to the database yet. Uh, so what we need to do is use Alembic to uh, actually uh, upgrade the database to the current thing. So uh, we're going to probably have to do it through pip and run again. And we just want to say uh, upgrade. And just like um, Git does, it has a, a head version or a head uh, pip n. Let's do that. Uh, it has our um, most recent version called head. And that should uh -huh, uh -huh, upgrade. Great, pet model. Did we do it? Let's refresh. Aha, there we go. Hey, look, it made our pets table. Um, so that has all the stuff we uh, want to see in it. There's no um, no uh, rows in it yet, uh, but we will do that here. Uh, and here's since our database is updated, we could uh, go to our model file. Uh, we could put that uh, useless thing in here. Uh, 
Uh, and then now, if we do our generate, that should play nice. Hey, did it do it? There we go. Um, it just happens to be in order this time. So we can see that it's the uh, it's using the same template there. Um, our down revision, so the previous revision is that. If we look at this, it should have updated it to, nope, I guess not. So it just goes, it goes from the head and looks backwards, cool. Um, how does it know what to run next? I don't know. That's a great question. Um, Cool, but we can see our upgrade uh, is just adding columns and removing columns. So it's only only doing that stuff. And hey, if we want to uh, say we want to get rid of it, uh, we can just, uh, we need to update the database first and it should add that useless there. Great. Uh, and varchar is the variable character length string there. Um, but if we want to useless uh, downgrade, I'll create a third one for us. Great, yeah, that is not in <laughs> not in order, uh, but we can see our down revision is a previous one here. Um, great, and we can see that it is dropping that column, uh, and so we can just run that again, and it should make that go away. Cool, um, yeah. So pretty much as you're as you're developing, um, you know, you're not gonna you probably won't uh, have the entire database schema for your entire app all uh, all perfect the first time through. So as you are developing and adding stuff, renaming columns, um, pulling a table into two tables, adding relationships, um, you can just kind of do that as you go along, make sure you're updating your models file and then make a new migration instead of, um, I'll see some people just like blow everything away and make a new like main migration for the one that has uh, everything the way they want it. Um, and I find that less useful um, just because just the way that you, you know, uh, check in and commit and whatnot, your files, your code files, um, if you go down a path and you decide that's not a good path to go down and want to come back, um, then you won't have those steps to roll back on and you have to kind of figure that out by hand. So this is a this is a really nice uh, sustainable way to do this. Um, cool, before we jump into all of the actual using stuff, what questions do we have about uh, migrations? If any. Um, I think I get it and or got it. Uh, <laughs> I got my, you know, DB file created. Um, when I ran the revision thing, I had, you know, all my, my table, you know, the class stuff with the, the columns and whatnot. Um, more of a, like, I guess what I would like to do on my project today is get like all the data into the tables. Um, and I'm just kind of lost on, on that. Um, and then random thing too, is like when I did all like my, like I have all my imports and stuff um, for, you know, column integer or whatnot, like they don't, this might be just stupid, but they don't like change color up there. They're just white. And I don't, that doesn't give me a confidence that <laughs> actually imported then. Huh. Um, but like, if I go into my pit file, like it, it has, you know, SQL alchemy with the star, has Alembic with the star. Mm -hmm. um, so it could be a non-issue, but it just doesn't give me confidence that it imported them because they they're just like plain, like white text. Like the, the purple words are purple, hmm. but the other stuff. Interesting. Um, um, it might be a VS Code, like syntax highlighting configuration thing. Um, I don't know. I mean, if it, if you can, you know, if you just have that and run that and it works, um, you know, then it works. If it's not throwing any errors when you're importing stuff, um, the highlighting is cool to have, but if it works without it, 
it, what it, uh, what would I run in the terminal to check? Um, you could just run like you know Python the file name, um, and then it would you know if we did uh, well I guess we don't want to do that right now. Um, but if you just had you know this, you can do uh, over here. Yeah, so we could do uh, Python. Python. Oh, okay, great. Um, Python uh, models. A module called, oh, uh, uh, is Python, do I have to do Python 3 here? Nope. Um, how, that should work. Oh, do I need to do it in my pipette? Hey, there we go. Yeah. So, um, in whatever environment or virtual environment you have there, you can just run this as a Python file because it is a Python file. Um, and if it doesn't throw any errors, great. Um, but also if you are you know, using it in with uh, Alembic or any of that stuff and you try and run any of that stuff and it works, then it works. Cool. Um, I think it worked, but I'll, well, let's continue. I can ask you after. Cool. Um, and, uh, I don't know if we're going to be doing seeding stuff, um, here, but in, um, yeah, there we go. Uh, in Canvas, there's a, there's a section on seeding, um, it actually uses Faker to generate a bunch of stuff. Uh, we might use it. We might do it here. Um, but yeah, but basically it's just a file that, um, uses the stuff we're going to look at right now to just create a bunch of uh, a bunch of stuff. And you can either do that by hand, generate it with Faker or something, um, um, use ChatGPT to make a, <laughs> a migration file for you for it, or a, um, a seed file for it. Um, there's a bunch of different ways, uh, which we'll, we'll, we'll look at some of them. Um, and yeah, we might have time to do the, um, do the seeding stuff. Yeah. Maybe, uh, we'll see. Uh, but definitely it's in the, uh, it's in Canvas uh, working with seed data under the SQL and stuff. Um, cool. Uh, Turn the file. Yeah, so we need to actually do pipm run. Um, I guess I could do the pipm shell, but we were already here. I've done three uh, models. Why? Uh, and so it should do nothing. Command Python 2. Yeah, that's because it should be Python 3. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. I always have trouble with the uh, debugger. I never use that. Um, why? Expected end of file. Why Python? Why? Oh, because there's nothing in here. So, cool. Um, so great. Doesn't nothing. That's what we wanted. Um, thank you. So, uh, what are we doing here? So, here is where we're going to use um, the uh, ORM part to use our models and actually do our CRUD operations on our database without having to write SQL by hand and send that off. Um, which is which is why we're here. Um, this stuff you should know already. Uh, so basically, we're saying um, you know if if this is the thing we're running, run this thing. Uh, if it's a library, don't run it. Uh, that's the same, and you'll probably see that in your uh, CLI stuff as well. Uh, basically, every time you bring in a uh, every time a Python script is run, it has a name a special variable. If that name is main, that means that you ran it from the command line or whatever kicker offer you got. Um, and so if it's if it's the one you want to run, this is where you put all your code. So let's put some code in here. Um, so first off, um, it doesn't know about um, any of the configuration stuff in here. Uh, so we need to make sure our uh, we are looking at the same uh, SQLite 
instance as that is, and we need to do that manually. So uh, let's, oh, oh, there it is, engine. Oh, the code is right here. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna uncomment instead of typing it dead. Cool, so um, the, uh, the quote unquote engine is basically the uh, SQL alchemy uh, instance, or yeah, instance is the word, uh, that we're going to be using to as the interface for our database. So instead of uh, making a direct connection to it um, with the SQL SQL light library, uh, we're using uh, this the engine of SQL alchemy, uh, and that's kind of our intermediary. So we need to tell it where it is, um, and it, we need to uh, generate all the metadata for it. I don't know why that's our responsibility. Um, it should, should be great. Uh, it should be the responsibility of this, but here we are. So um, boilerplate code. Um, yeah. Uh, so the engine is what interprets all of the uh, stuff we're going to be doing uh, and changes it into SQL and sends it there and handles responses and all that stuff. Um, hey, yeah, let's just uncomment that. Great. So uh, sessions. So a session is um, a um, like one one go at the engine. Uh, basically, if we went to uh, the command line, type that's mm, SQL. Yeah. Uh, so if we you know type SQL at three, um, here we can um, you know say uh, uh, what? Oh, I haven't used this one in a while. Um, yeah, cool. I'm gonna do it right on the thing. SQLite with our uh, pet FDB. Great. And uh, if I said you know, select all from pets, there should be nothing in there, but it will execute the command. Um, so basically, a session is one of these until we close it. Uh, and it's again a bunch of boilerplate stuff. Uh, it would be really cool if it did this by itself, but it doesn't. So uh, we just Put that there anytime we want to do stuff. Uh, so the the you can kind of think of the engine as like the whole setup, uh, and the um, session as like this this particular batch of commands we're sending back and forth. So the, our our engine is the interface to the. Uh, to the uh, SQL alchemy to the database. Our session is our interface to the engine. A lot of extra steps that we shouldn't care about, but we do. Um, so let's um, do our CRUD stuff. And to have stuff to uh, R, we need to C first. So we're going to make a new pet and we're going to create uh, save it to the database. So um, the way we're gonna do this is just uncomment that. Um, great. So uh, we are using the pet class that we made here in models to, uh, um, and we are importing that up here. Uh, so we, we know what it is. Um, and we're just doing it just like we were creating any other pet, any other class. Uh, we're Specifying the actual um, names in um, this format, basically passing it a, um, is it passing it a dictionary for real? I don't know if that's how it is in Python, but that's basically how it is. Um, since we don't have our, um, uh, since we don't have our constructor that takes arguments in order, uh, basically, when pet uses base to set up a thing, it accepts a, it more or less accepts a dictionary. Um, not exactly, but you can think of it that way uh, to pass the uh, arguments in by uh, by key name. So we're saying name equals that, species equals that, breed equals that, and so on. Um, and notice the one thing that we don't need to send is the ID. Uh, and that's because the database will generate the IDs for us. Um, as soon as we transition to working with databases, you pretty much never want to specify, specify an ID um, when we are creating stuff. 
uh, there may be instances like testing or whatever, um, where you want to create specific things with specific IDs. In general, it's not a great idea. So um, don't sweat it. Don't, don't send an ID. Um, and we are going to need to, um, because we are using sessions, uh, we need to actually uh, add the things to the, uh, no, they, they're in the session. Uh, we need to add them to the session and we need to commit them. So again, kind of the same uh, as if we're doing stuff with Git, we're gonna add it to our, you know, our staging basically and, um, and commit them. So these aren't actually in, uh, in the session yet. These are just using uh, the pet class that we made. And so what we need to do is say session add, um, and we can just add, we can add one at a time. So we can do rows, um, we can do spot like that. Um, or we could um, uh, bulk add them basically. So instead of adding them one at a time like that, we can say session bulk, yeah, bulk, bulk, save objects. That's what we want. Um, and here we need to pass it a list. Uh, and that's, I think you'll be using them about equally, uh, depending on what you're doing. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, either of these, these are the same. Uh, I'll leave that there. Um, so this adds stuff to the session when we actually want to uh, write or when we want to execute that command, we need to uh, commit with a function. So if we run this now, uh, we run this now, um, I feel pretty good about this. Great. Uh, if we refresh this and look at our pets database, hey, look at that. Uh, we have successfully used SQLite, Alembic, and all this good stuff to add things to our database. Um, and this is basically in a seed file. Um, I, th I think Alembic has explicit stuff for seeding, but uh, you can just you know basically do this. Um, do this uh, and put a bunch of stuff in here and create them willy-nilly, uh, William Nilliam as you would like. So uh, that's, that is a way to get it. And you can use the Faker uh, library to do basically the same thing. Uh, instead of putting explicit stuff in here, you can have it generate a bunch of stuff for it. Um, I think, uh, I'm pretty sure there's definitely stuff on that in that seeding uh, exercise there. Um, hey, look at that. We said to do what we just did. Oh, hey, look, we did that too. We had it. Um, cool. There's not a lot more to it than that. Um, any questions about uh, creating things in the database? Awesome. So um, we did our C. We're going to do our uh, R. So um, I'm going to comment this stuff because we don't want to edit every time you run. Um, so now we're going to do our read. So um, we're still using our session for this. Um, great, 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 great. Cool. Um, so we're still using our session. And the session, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of database um, thingies call it a cursor instead. Um, you'll see that in other languages or other ORMs in Python even, uh, but session is what we're calling the thing that we're working with. So uh, we're creating our session, we're opening our session. And so now we want to um, make a query and we can uh, do that. So we're gonna say um, session query, right? Yeah. And um, let's just look for uh, pets. And so we want to, uh, this is going to do not perks, Pets um, is going to do the basic query of select all from the thing. Um, and then we need to see what it gets. So it's going to return it in what format? Um, I think it's just a list. I think it just returns it in a list. So we should be just be able to say um, 
We can do this copy. We can say print uh, pets. Or actually, we can do pet for pet. In, yeah. Pet. Pet for pet. Great. Uh, so this should print out the pets in the format that we gave it here. Uh, so let's see if that's true. Hey, yeah, look at that. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Um, so it is printing out the list. I'm curious. I just want to see here. Um, so I think it's returning a list, but looking at it, it might not. So I think this is going to give us a, like a, some sort of, uh, kind of iterator object, maybe? Huh. <laughs> it prints out the entire query. Oh, yeah, because we want to actually do the query. So, yeah. Interesting. I did not know I'd do that. Cool. So, if you want to see the actual SQL that's generated by a query, this is a way to do it. Um, interesting. Interesting. So, I'm guessing that in um, in base, it basically says uh, it has a refer uh, method that says when you say to print a thing, print out the query. But it also just has a representation of his uh, internal representation as uh, a list. Um, interesting, interesting. That is that is not how I've done that. But here we are. Um, and let's see if we can pet, uh, do one more thing I want to explore here. Uh, if we just look at the first item in pets, is that going to be that list or is it going to be the things in there? Yeah, great. It's just the first one. So we can say print pets zero, print pets one, and that will give us what we expect. Fantastic. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that query, uh, the query thing that's returning is special in that if you try to print it directly, it will give you the SQL query. Uh, but if you print elements of it, it will print the actual things that are returned. Um, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Um, you can also uh, have some helper methods. So um, you can say like, uh, uh, what is that? Does it have? First and last, maybe. So if I say, um, uh, I have to do a new query for that, right? So I say, uh, I know that one is what? Uh, rows. So if I say, uh, you know, rows equals session query. Um, so I want to get the, I want to do my my regular query like that, uh, I can say first, maybe. I bet that works. Uh, um, yeah, that'll do it. Hey, look at that. Um, I think we can do last if we say um, spot. It doesn't matter what you call these, it's just for me. Nope, no last. Okay, great. Um, that's fine. We don't need a last. Uh, we can do it first. Um, there are, I have to look at the documentation. I think there are some other helper methods like that. Um, first is probably the one you're going to be using the most. So uh, that's cool. Um, we can also do some, uh, I can't get rid of all this. Um, we can also do, so basically, all of the stuff that you can do with the select operator in SQL, most of the stuff, um, they have ways to do it with the uh, session as well, or the query, I guess. So um, if we want to just get the um, like the names of the pets, um, we could say names, uh, session, query. And instead of just giving it the uh, 
pet. We can say pet name, and it exposes all of the uh, things for us here. So name, and then we can say uh, print names. And that should just print out rows and spots. Hey, look at that. Um, but they are tuples, right? Um, we're not just getting the thing. We are getting uh, the things in a specific way. So when you want to use these in your actual um, uh, app, you need to be able to pull these out. I think, I think, since each one of these is a tuple, I think we should be able to pull the first one out and just get the string out. Am I lying? Nope, not lying. Great. So, um, and it does that because um, we can do, um, uh, we should be able to do multiple things, right? How do we do that? Pet name, pet, uh, let's see, pet data. Uh, so we get pet name and can query take more than one thing? I don't know if it's going to do that. Uh, let's see. Oh. <laughs> uh, the thing. Um, so if it does what I think it should do, it should give us those tuples with name and breed. I'm guessing it's going to give an error for that, though. Oh, no, look at that. It works. Cool. Um, and I bet, I don't know, uh, but I bet if we had more tables in here, we could do like that. Uh, so we could have, we could do our select from multiple tables uh, and get these tuples back, which seems pretty useful. Um, that is speculation. I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> um, uh, we can also... Um, do um, I think you can do it. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think it, ha it has methods for like ordering and um, oh, what's the other SQL that it has? You can do order by, and you can do. I don't know if you can do a filter through this. You have to do it with the uh, Python, but um, yeah. I'm not going to talk through all the things. Uh, look at the documentation. It's pretty good. And it has all the cool things you can do with it. Uh, this should set you up um, for the most part, I think. Um, yeah, I think that's all I want to say about queries. Um, yeah, I think that'll do it. Um, questions? What questions do we have about queries? All right, everybody knows all the stuff. Cool. Uh, we did that, we did that, we did that. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Query order by. Great, we did that first. Great, we did that. Um, filter, not going to do that. Um, that's just, that's just my thought. Um, blow through these last, I think these last two. Yeah. Um, these are pretty much what you'd expect them to be, I think. Uh, if we want to uh, update, um, we can use the session for that. Um, and we can, uh, what are we looking at? Yeah. Um, so when we want to update things, we, it's a two-step process. We need to, um, query, uh, and we're going to do, um, oh, what do we want to do? Let's just grab the first one. Please. Right. Um, That's not what I wanted. Um, I'm going to say uh, our, our, our dog thing. Uh, we're going to grab that. If we look at the thing, uh, it's going to be uh, the uh, thing that we printed. So this is going to be our pet object. Um, it's not going to be a tuple like this. It's actually giving us our uh, object because we're not asking for specific fields. 
Uh, and since it is an object, um, we can still do all the stuff that we do with regular objects, or a lot of the stuff anyway. Um, so we can just set the um, thing name to um, call thing. Uh, and then uh, once we have uh, changed it, we need to um, commit that change. So basically that's saying uh, we're opening we're opening our cursor down here. We are typing in the um, uh, up, update uh, where it equals that. Uh, and we're closing our session and committing it. Uh, and so if we run this, let me print it out. Uh, I should print it here. Uh, so this should do great. There's thing down there. Um, turn rows into thing. And now if we just uh, do our select that is saved in the database and we should just get that. Great, saved in the database. In fact, if we look over here, uh, it has changed in the database as well. No fooling. Um, yeah, and so you can you can do most of the normal objects to it. Um, the thing, of course, that you can't do is just assign it a new object. Uh, that's that's not going to work great. Um, yeah, yeah, um, and there are some little variations in the syntax. Um, yeah, so we had. Uh, how do we do this? Let's do this. Um, so if we want to update all of the pets temperaments. Uh, we're going to do, um, how are we going to do that? We're going to uh, do a query. Um, we're going to do a query on pent. And we are going to update it right here um, with uh, update. Yeah, right, update. I mean, as soon as the thing we can do, um, and so we want to give it a um, a little dictionary of key values for the key values. Really. So we want to say um, we want to set the temperament here, and we're going to set it to cool. Uh, and then, of course, we need to do our session commit. Um, I hope that works. Let's find out. Nope. Quitty, that's why. Always. That's why I did it. Now if I say that, let's go here. Yeah, okay, cool. That's a thing that exists when you type the right thing. Uh, cool, let's do that. Fantastic. And if we look in our database, all of them are cool. Great. Um, and I think you can do a where on that. Um, I'd have to look at the documentation. So you can say, like, update this where you know, pet age is older than five or whatever. Um, but yeah, so you've got a bunch of things you can do there. Uh, we're a little bit over time, but we can do this last one. Um, and this is the same, uh, basically the same uh, as you want. You can say um, session delete. So you can say, um, well, Yeah, I guess we can do, if we get it, yeah, so we need to do the, we need to get the thing first, right? Yeah, so uh, thing, I think was our thing. Um, if we do a uh, session query for pet for first, uh, this should be our thing, Let's make sure we get it. Great, there's our thing. Uh, and I think we can just do a session delete thing. Do we need to commit that? I don't think we need to commit that. I think that is an action. Let's find out. Fresh. Maybe we do need to commit it. Yeah, because it's still a command we're running in that in that uh, cursor there. Great. Now if we do. There we go. Yep. Make sure to commit all your stuff. Um, oh, yeah, because we can do a million commands here. And if we don't commit it, nothing's going to happen. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Um, I 
think you can also chain a delete off of a query. So if we do like um, delete here, is that gonna work? I don't know. Nope. Um, what's the way to do that? Um, query. Yeah, maybe you can't do that. Um, but yeah, select for the things you want to delete, delete them, and commit. And that's how we do deletes. Uh, and that is the basic CRUD stuff. Um, yeah, I think that's all we're going to hit today. Um, we haven't talked about doing relations in the databases yet. Um, maybe we'll do that tomorrow. Um, and if you want, play with play with the seed file thing. Um, you can make your own seed file and run it like this. Uh, there may be some better advice in, in the Canvas module for that. Um, yeah, I think that's all I want to hit. Um, yeah, I think that's what we get. Uh, all that. Cool. Uh, yeah, what questions do we have here? I think that's all I want to hit. Are you feeling I have a yeah. question not necessarily about this, yeah. but more about like the projects as a whole. Yeah, yeah. I was looking through some of the examples you sent, and the one I'm looking at right now, see, I'm hoping it is going very above and beyond because it's a bunch of stuff that we like have not even touched on until this project. Uh, which uh, do you have? Uh, I'm looking at. Uh, um, it is. Let me go find the list of all the ones you sent. Oh, well, do you have like a video or something just of when they did, like when a last group, a previous group or something presented so that we can see what it actually looks like at the um, very end? I bet I do. Yeah, let me see. Um, where's my browser? Here, where? There's a browser. Okay, cool. Uh, let me find the old playlist. Uh, oh one three oh two three. That looks right. You should be able to load for me. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. There we go. Um, bah, 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 da, da, da. phase two, phase three. Um, Oh, you know what? I actually don't because I was out that week. Yeah, um, I don't. Nope. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I go straight from the middle of phase three to phase four. <laughs> Sorry about that. And no worries. Um, do you remember which project you're you're looking at? Uh, in the list of all the examples, it was the second to last one. Uh, by S. Baskin. Yeah, okay. this project. yeah, she was ambitious and did a lot of cool stuff. Um, <laughs> the description looks pretty straightforward. Um, do, 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 do. Yep, yep. Yeah, so it's a student teacher review one. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty straightforward, I think. That's because um, it's basically like code challenge level stuff, um, only with SQL equity in the back end. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so okay. this one, uh, and this, they were working on them in pairs, so they had a little bit of extra time there. Um, but yeah, that's I think that's actually a really good one to look at for structure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, that is uh, S basket github.com sbaskin phase dash three dash project. Anyone in the future wants to see that. Um, cool, yeah. I haven't looked at those in a while. Awesome. <laughs> um,
um yeah and you can definitely look through that for structure and uh how they did seeds and everything too mm. yeah um cool do you have any uh, other specific questions about that one not yet cool <laughs> um cool anyone else have questions about the stuff we went through here Awesome. Uh, I think I will put some time tomorrow for going over the relationship stuff because uh, you'll definitely be needing that. Uh, but it should be a little bit easier than this, I think, because it'll just be building on this and kind of talking about uh, the way we did uh, well, setting up relationships in SQL Alchemy in the same way that we set them up in uh, plain old Python. Um, cool. Yeah. So uh, last call for questions. Awesome. Uh, I'll post this video up in the usual places if it has been helpful, um, or I'm going to post it whether it's been helpful or not. <laughs> and uh, cool. Yeah. I'll see y'all in a little bit. Thanks for hanging out.